have an idea in your mind of something you want, and you deserve to get it. So how do you get there? Well, welcome to The Idea Space, a podcast devoted to helping you overcome frustration and make what you want a reality. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, high school teacher turned entrepreneur. Now I'm a business development coach. It's my mission to help women bring their ideas to life and get what they want without feeling guilty, selfish, overwhelmed, or lost. Every week, I share topics, tools, and strategies to help you move toward that thing you want, create time and energy to do the things you love, get clarity on what you really want and how to get there, and most importantly, stop feeling alone with your challenges. Whether you've wanted to create a better business, job, relationship, hobby, or self, I know there's something more that you want, and it's time you were able to get it with confidence and clarity. Ready to have it? Let's go. Hi, welcome to the Idea Space Podcast. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, and it's November 2019 when I'm recording this episode. And what I know about November is it's a whooshy kind of a month. And what I mean by that is, as we hurdle into the holiday season, we tend to get lost there. The holidays become an excuse for why nothing really gets done and we don't grow in ways we want to grow. And that's why this year in November, I want to plant a few seeds in your brain so that this year you don't get lost. You don't go into January trying to recover and catch up. I'd love for you to go into January really clear and focused. And that's why this month, my podcast is focused on sharing three steps I use with my clients to help them get clear and get focused so that they can take action without wasting their time or their money or their energy. Now, you might feel like, oh my God, I'm not going to have any time over the next two months to do anything because everything just gets so out of control. And if that's you, that's fine. Take the tools and let them marinate in your brain. Just kind of noodle them around, think about them, maybe work on them in your heart, and maybe even sit down and do some writing using them. So let's get started with the step, the first step I teach my clients, which helps them get clarity in a way that they usually resist before they meet me. So this, this step that I'm going to share with you today, most people want to skip this step. And I'm going to tell you all about this step. I call it the clarity step when we are trying to gain traction in our business. And clarity is the most vital thing that you can have as an entrepreneur because it it will help you know where you're going. When we have clarity, we're moving forward. When we don't have clarity, when we feel fuzzy or frustrated, we're kind of spinning around and around, almost like a wheel that's stuck in mud that can't get traction. So I want to get started with the clarity step by asking you, who does your business serve or help? And it doesn't matter where you are on the business building spectrum. You might just have an idea in your head, or you might be running a thriving business and have uh, a, an idea that you want to pivot, or you want to grow or scale, or you want to add something to your repertoire. But I really want you to think about who that business serves, who that product serves, who that uh, service serves. And If you are saying something really general, like my business helps everybody, we can help men and we can help women, we can help teens and we can help girls and we can help, you know, the elderly. If you're trying to help everybody or you've said something like, I help women between the ages of 30 and 50, or I help men between the ages of 45 and 60, whatever it is you're saying right now, my bet is that it's far too broad. And we want to help everybody because we are generally heart-centered entrepreneurs. We're highly sensitive in that we're really focused on what other people need. And because of that, we want to serve everybody. And frankly, I want to tell you a story about my first business. Remember, I was an owner of a, of a fitness studio and we wanted to help everybody. We, we did classes. They were circuit-based classes. They were really fun. They were lovely and wonderful. And we knew that everybody could benefit from them. We knew that men could benefit. Women could benefit. Women who were out of shape could benefit. Women who were athletes could benefit. Teens could benefit. We actually, even at some point, did a kids class. And 
we added in yoga and we added in spinning and we had so much going on that it brought us to this point where we were working so hard all the time that we were exhausted. And this is why I am doing this training on the podcast because what I find is that most entrepreneurs are so tired in their businesses. They're so overwhelmed because they're trying to serve everyone. And it was a huge mistake that we made. We would not commit to serving one target market or ideal client. And I want to talk about target markets and ideal clients. And if you've never heard this term before, it's basically the, the dream client, the perfect person that you can serve, that you want to serve, who has the qualities that you're looking to work with. Now, what happens to entrepreneurs is they say things like, but, but I want to, I want to serve everybody because I don't want to limit myself. I want to make as much money as possible. And also, I know everybody can benefit from this thing I offer. And I'm not arguing that at all. I'm not arguing that everybody could benefit. What I'm arguing is, who are you messaging to? So I want you to think about what I said about the fitness studio. We were trying to target women who were kind of just getting back into fitness. And then we were also trying to target men. And we were trying to target high level athletes and trying to target teenagers. Now, that's four different target markets. That's four different types of clients with four different types of needs. And maybe one class could serve all of them. And I actually know that that is true. The class was highly differentiated in that it could serve everybody. But here's why it's so exhausting to try to serve everybody. How the hell do you create a website? that will appeal to the woman who is just getting up off the couch and the woman who's an elite athlete runner who's looking for some cross training and also to a man and also to a teenager? How do you create marketing materials and use the words to talk to those different four types of people? How do you price your offers in the right way? What are the offers that those four different types of people need? They all need something different. And what I want you to understand is that if you think that your product and service can help everyone, I'm not doubting that. What I'm doubting is that you can market and speak and serve everyone in a way that doesn't exhaust you, especially if you're a solopreneur without an enormous team. So if this sounds like you and this sounds like what you're doing, I don't want you to beat yourself up, but I do want you to start thinking about how it's affecting your life. I want to tell you about uh, a client of mine, Trisha. She was a special education teacher, and she's been in teaching for 20-something years. She's quite an established teacher. And her idea to speak about how to empower teenagers has been chasing her for a really long time. She'd been trained to motivate and empower teenagers, and she was really excited about doing it. And she does it in the classroom every single day. And because she does it in the classroom, the teachers that she works with are like, how do you do that? That's amazing. I want to learn how to do that. And also the administrators who see what she's doing, they're fascinated by her approach. So everybody was curious about what she's doing. And she really wanted to take this and make it a business and speak about empowering teenagers. But here was the problem. She got into some analysis paralysis because she's like, okay, I have three target markets. I have teenagers, I have teachers, and I have administrators. And again, it's the same problem that I had at Method 360, which was what resonates with all three segments of her people? You know, like not only website and marketing copy, but also like think about logo and branding. How do you create a brand that appeals to those vastly three different types of people that she wanted to work with. And again, then how do you create offers and pricing for those without being all over the board? Because one of the things I know about offers and pricing is when you offer too many things, people are paralyzed and they don't buy. Rather than trying to slog through all of your options, they don't buy. So beyond that, the next thing I want to talk about why this is so confusing for people is Think about referrals. Think about how you refer one of your friends to a service or product you love. You're probably really specific about it. You probably think of, oh, that my best friend would love this thing because this fits her exactly. But if you have a product or a service that 
appeals to or that you want it to appeal to three or four different target markets, people are going to have trouble telling other people about you. You know, it would sound something like, oh, you've got to meet Trisha. She's a teacher and she's really amazing at working with teenagers and she teaches teachers how to blah, blah, blah. And she also goes into school districts and does blah, blah, blah. Like you can imagine that that the message is lost on who's ever supposed to hear it because you can't refer to somebody if you're not clear. So this is why I call this step the clarity step. Basically, you have to target exactly who you want to help. Now, there's a lot of words for this. It's, you know, there's ideal client, niche or niche, avatar, audience, customer, or even persona. But if you've got to get clear on the kind of person that you want to work your magic with. Now, here's where I want to talk about something that feels a little bullshitty to me. There's this exercise that a lot of business coaches will take you through, and it's called find your ideal client avatar. And I actually have my clients do it sometimes, but not until we are much clearer on who they want to work with. But it's this exercise where it's like, I want you to imagine what your ideal client looks like and what her name is and what magazines she reads, where she spends time, what she's doing on the web. And that can be helpful sometimes, but people get really down this rabbit hole of thinking about what their ideal client looks like and does rather than thinking about the qualities of the person that they want to work with. And when I say qualities, I want you to think about what's the kind of person that you want to work with, the type of person that you want to work with. Let me give you an example. As a business coach, I want to work with a woman who's coachable first. She understands that she's in, in a relationship with me for transformation. If I've got a potential client who's who already knows everything and doesn't want to be taught and isn't willing to show up and be vulnerable, she's not coachable. That's a quality of my ideal client that I'm looking for, somebody who's ready for change. So if you can stop thinking about, you know, that your ideal client is this particular demographic and think more about her psychographic and the, the psychology of her and the emotions that she's dealing with, you're going to have a lot easier time figuring out who to target your message to. And this is the last part of what I want to talk about today. So fine, I'm a business coach. I can work with women at the beginning of their journey. I can work with women at the middle of their journey. And I can work with women who are, who are transitioning to the end of their journey in their business. And I prefer working with women. But does that mean I won't work with men? No. It just means I don't market to men. My message is not for men. I'm not talking to men in my podcast. I'm not talking to men in my blog or my videos or my social media posts or my, or I'm not talking to men. If one is drawn to me and likes my messaging, could I work with him? Yes. But I save a lot of time and energy by not trying to hit all of these target markets who might need me. I've picked one. Female solopreneurs who need to get over the overwhelm, who want to grow their businesses, who feel a little stuck. That's my ideal client. And she's coachable and she's open and she's willing to try some things. So I wonder, who do you want to attract to work with you? What qualities do they have? Think about the people you've worked with or helped already. What have you loved about those people? And then how have you helped those people? These are important things to think about as you're thinking about your ideal client. Now, last thing to think about is a very important question, which I think not enough people do think about, which is who do I not want to help? If you can think about who you never want to work with again, not, not what, you know, the age range or where they live, but the type of person you never want to work with again, that's wonderful. I have realized I, uh, in the beginning of my journey, I was an accountability coach and I was really looking to help everybody, especially at the beginning of your business. You just want to get so much experience. But as you start to grow, you're really going to want to start to get more deep and narrow in your niche. And that's when I stopped working with men. And that's when I stopped working with teenagers because they were just two uh, populations that just, I 
didn't feel like I could speak their language. I didn't feel like I could serve them in a way. And also they just like, I just didn't enjoy it as much as I enjoy working with specifically women solopreneurs. So who do you not want to work with anymore? What kind of clients don't you want to work with anymore? And just to take this a little bit further, I want, to th I want you to think about the people that you've worked with that you knew in your heart right from the beginning they weren't a good fit. I want you to think about like how that whole relationship went. And did you feel extra depleted by it? Did you find that when you saw that person's name on your calendar, maybe you were uh, like rolling your eyes or resistant or not looking forward to it? That means that that type of person is the person you don't want to work with. So these are all really important things to think about because it will give you freedom in your business. I want you to go into 2020 knowing who you want to focus your messaging on because so much of our time is spent creating offers and writing messaging and writing content and, and, and sharing what we know with people. And if you're trying to share it with everybody, it's just going to fall flat because it's going to be super vanilla. I want you to be you know, mint chocolate chip or pistachio or super fudge, but I want you to have something in your business that's special for you. Now, most people, I will tell you, 90% of entrepreneurs skip this step, sometimes because they don't know to do it, but you don't have that excuse because now you know. But a lot of people say to me, oh my God, I've already invested so much in my website or I've already invested so much in my branding or I've made so many offers already and they're on my website and I've done the sales pages for them. You know what? I promise you that using that as an excuse will just continue to keep you stuck. Even if you've already invested the time and energy in making something and if it's not flying off the shelves, it's because you aren't hitting the right target market. So this is still worth doing. The other reason people don't want to do this work is that they don't want to leave anyone out. And I really understand that, especially if you're a heart-centered entrepreneur. You like, you want to help all the people because you know you can help all the people. And I remember feeling that way so strongly, especially at the beginning of my accountability coaching business. I knew I could help everybody. Like every time I would meet somebody and they would complain about something, I would think in my head, oh my God, I could work with you. I could totally help you. But now I know I'm a perfect fit for a very certain kind of female entrepreneur. And that saves me so much time and energy. I can't even express to you. So I promise you, other people out there can help those other people. Who do you want to work with the most? And then next week, I'm going to share the next step of this because the last mistake that people make when they are starting their business or growing their business is they tend to resemble their ideal client. And that's a mistake that we all make because if we resemble our ideal client, we start to make lots of assumptions about what that ideal client needs. And next week, I'm going to share a tool with you to help you stop assuming, because you know what happens when you assume, and start getting really clear. So I want you to know, I've done this with my clients, and they tell me, like, once they do this, everything gets easier for them. They stop worrying. They feel relaxed. They feel excited. They know where they're headed. They don't feel scattered. They don't feel frazzled. So I promise you, doing this work can really help you. If you need help with this work, you can go to my website and download a freebie that will help you with the very first part of who do I help. So if you go to jenliddy.com forward slash spinning replay, you'll not only find the download, you'll also find a training that I did on this. So if that's interesting to you, go to the website or share it with the person that you know who is all over the place in her business and just really needs to niche down. I hope this has been helpful to you. I'd love to hear any comments. You can always contact me on my website, www.jenliddy.com. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for listening this week. I really appreciate your time. Bye. Thanks for joining me today. You can access more free tools and video trainings at www dot jenliddy dot com slash free sources. That's F R E E sources. If you found this podcast helpful, I'd be so grateful if you subscribed and gave a review. And if you have a friend who'd benefit from today's topic, tool, or strategy, please share the Idea Space podcast with her. That way, together we can help more women achieve their dreams and take action on their ideas. Isn't it time we all were able to get what we want? 
Join me next week. And remember, right now, all you need to do to make your idea a reality is take the very next step you know how to. Bye.